Greetings, my gang. As the weather sort of breaks and it starts to rain here in Norfolk, I thought that there were a couple of things I wanted to talk about. Actually, this week I want to talk about uh, two things that I did that dramatically changed paddling for me. Dramatically changed. Uh, one of them is skill, one of them is a piece of gear, but you're probably not thinking that the impact that they would have would be as big as it was. And I fought both of them, and I was wrong about both of them. Both of them were huge impacts and really good for me to do. Okay, so let's talk about those. Let's go. Good morning, everyone. I hope you have a nice cup of coffee this fine Sunday morning. Um, and as I said, I want to talk about two things that I fought, but then eventually did that dramatically changed paddling for me. The first was I bit the bullet and bought a dry suit. Now, if you follow this channel, you know that I paddle all winter long here in the South and it gets cold and sometimes the lakes when, I was, when I'm in North Carolina freeze, sometimes they don't, but I paddle all year long. And uh, part of that is that I bought a dry suit, but it's important to understand that I fought that for a very long time, mainly because I didn't want to spend the money. I said to myself and whoever would listen, but mostly to myself, that you didn't need a dry suit, a dry top, or even a rain jacket and, and paddling pants were enough. And the problem that I had, what I struggled with, was keeping my feet warm and dry, particularly when I was paddling in Alaska. And I did a number of seasons up in Alaska with cold, wet feet, and it is as much fun as it sounds like. It's absolutely no fun. And I tried tons of different things. There were not as many options on the market at the time. This was over a decade ago. And then finally, when I decided I was gonna paddle the Inside Passage, and there was a chance I was gonna do that alone, I realized for safety, I had to buy a dry suit. And so that was what finally got me to bite the bullet. But what I didn't realize was the effect that it was going to have. And I'll talk about that effect in one second. First, I want to talk about the other thing, a skill that for a long time I put off learning that dramatically changed paddling for me. And that skill was rolling my kayak. Um, having the ability to roll my kayak was a game changer. Um, and essentially the way that I did that was I found a local university that had a whitewater club that had on like Wednesday nights or something in the pool at the university, they had a rolling, free rolling clinics. And it was so that people could do the free rolling clinic and then go on trips with the whitewater club. And so I went there, finally learned how to roll, uh, rolled in a pool in a whitewater boat and then took it outside into my sea kayak and it transitioned pretty seamlessly from from whitewater kayak to sea kayak. It is easier to roll a whitewater kayak as opposed to a sea kayak but that's besides the point. Then I made the following summer like my summer of rolling so all I did all summer was work on rolling and at that point by the end of the summer I was rolling fluidly on both sides. I could do a no setup roll relatively easy um, and was working on the balance brace which is a Greenland rolling thing and I transitioned to back deck rolling, like back finishing rolls and front leaning finishing rolls. I did some shotgun rolls. I did just about everything. Since then, unfortunately, my roll, I let it slide for a while and I'm fighting back now. Um, so my roll is not as good as it was, but it works. It's serviceable. I've got a fairly consistent, fairly good roll. So I spent a summer building that skill. Was comfortable by the end of the summer, comfortable rolling. It was great. The effects of these two things that dramatically changed my ability and my skill set was this. By adding the dry suit, I was no longer worried about getting wet. Once you remove that fear of getting wet, I would paddle in any weather, in any water temperature. It didn't matter. It's like, nope, I, I may get a little cold, but I'm not going to get wet life is good. So that opened up the rest of the year for paddling. Paddling was no longer a warm weather activity for me. I was paddling all year long. My skills were never diminishing. Uh, in fact, they were consistently getting better. Then add in the roll 
meant that I was not afraid to try things that would inadvertently leave the boat upside down. So I was not nervous in surf. I was not nervous trying a paddle stroke like the low brace turn, which can very easily flip your boat over if you do it wrong. Um, I was not afraid to try things that I didn't know how to do because the worst thing that would happen was I'd end up rolling my boat, which I was super confident in. Those two things dramatically changed the way that I paddled my, so that my paddling skill set was able to build much more fluidly and much easier, right? If you think about paddling in your boat, the two things you're worried about are falling out of your boat and getting cold and wet. And once you eliminate those two things, life is far better. So I took those skills and used them as a base for building all of my other skills. The thing about rolling that's interesting is that sea kayakers dread it. And for whitewater paddlers, it's like just this thing you have to do and everyone does it. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, sea kayakers need to make it feel like that. It just needs to be something that we learn how to do. It opens up the world for you. So those are two things that I did that dramatically changed my paddling for the better. One, a relatively expensive purchase, but so worth it. The other, a skill that just takes a little bit of practice and a good teacher. Okay, that's it for this week. Do me a favor, hit like, hit subscribe. I'll see you outside.